Okay, let me show you another way that C sharp treats nullable uh, fairly or gives it high priority. First of all, look at all these nullable types. This is straight out of the previous videos. In fact, just to prove that they are nullable, I'll go like that. And this works fine and great and dandy. And then here I did the exact same code, but using my Jamie nullable. Again, we have to con call the constructor on the object here, passing the value in explicitly, whereas the compiler will just insert that automatically for you here. And then here I say, hey, nullable sum gets i plus j. But down here, when we try to do it, our j nullable doesn't have any special privileges to the compiler, so we get this error saying, hey, I can't add these two. All right, and your first inclination may be, if you understand operator overloading, let's go overload the operator plus. But that operator is not overloaded in the built-in one. Uh, and probably for good reason, because say we did a uh, date time nullable d gets date time dot now. And I said d gets d plus d. Well, it doesn't make sense to add two date times. All right, so if nullable actually implemented this operator for us, that would all of a sudden every value type that you use this syntax on would all of a sudden have a plus operator on. So that's not going to happen. What really happens is the compiler looks at this and says, oh, you're trying to add two nullable types. If the type that you passed into nullable implements or overloads this operator, and it could be any slew, plus, minus, divide, any of those operators, then I, the compiler, will step in and do some magic work. And here is the magic that the compiler works. As the compiler, we have to determine what does this really mean. Okay, and now, if you think about it, what does it mean to add two nullable types? All right, I, I, I believe I talked about this in a previous video, but if I add five to null, what's the result of that going to be? Well, I don't know what this is. Yeah, you can add 5 to it, but I don't know what this is. And so the result of that will be null. So the compiler literally emits instructions to check for this and to handle it accordingly. And the way it does that is with the ternary. First of all, for our ternary, we have to make these two values readable. Not writable, but readable. So public t value, or get, return value, little value there, and then control L, control V, V, and let's do the same but with has value, so this will be a bool, and this will be a has, and this will be a has, control shift U to uppercase that. So I think now we've made these two fields readable, we can do the ternary magic on it, that the compiler does it. Okay, if we have two values, for an example, five and a six, five and a six, then yeah, we can add them and return the results. So first thing we need to do is say, hey, um, I'll just put that down there. J dot I has value and J dot JJ dot has value. If both of them have value, then return new, or not return, just yield a new uh, J nullable of int J I dot value plus J J dot value. Pretty straightforward I hope. Otherwise one of them does not have value so just new j nullable which again that just zero out zeros out all the bits that's in the sum. Okay the compiler literally emits code identical to this and, and first of all you have to scratch your head and say wow putting the question mark on there can really slow down my code that's a lot more than just adding two values. Yeah it does so be aware of that um, how much it will slow it down, you know, profiler, use a profiler and figure it out. I wouldn't make any um, upfront assumptions. But then, look at this logic. Let's just play with this a little bit. I want to console right line. Let's console right line sum. And let's console right line j sum. Control F5. You see, hey, we got 11s. Okay. They both have uh, had values. So, so uh, let's initialize this j sum to an instance of nullable that has those two values added together. Very good. Let's change one to null. Let's change the j to null. All right, right here, this will be null, the corresponding Jamie version. And, oh, that's right. <laughs> How do we make null? We just zero out the bits. Again, that sets has value to false. So then in this ternary, j sub i will have value, but jj will not have value. 
So then it will just zero out the bits, which means we'll get null. Let me control F5 this, and you can see uh, null will return nothing, but then we got a zero in our version, right? Our two string isn't quite correct, right? What? How do we need to change our two string to make it match the built-in nullable one? Well, the thing is, we're always returning value dot two string, but if this is not true, then we don't have a value. We're illegally looking at this value when this is not true. Okay, let me say it a different way. When it's false, when this is false, we don't have value. So we can't look at that. Well, the code we've written here just says, hey, always look at it. So, oh boy, I feel another ternary coming on. So return has value. We'll go through the property there. Uh, if we have value, then value.toString, else null. All right, there's our null value. Run it again, control F5. Ah, same behavior as we had had from the, uh, the built-in one. Very good. In fact, now this may look handy dandy what I've done here, but when you actually check out what, what happens here, let's console write line, let's take j, j is the one we're assigning to null, and I want to say j.toString equals null. And if toString is implemented to return null, then this will print true, which is the exact same implementation we did over here. Control F5. <gasps> oh, look, it's false. All right, so this is kind of interesting with the toString. The toString always returns a legitimate string, even if it is the empty string. So control F5, and now we get true. So our implementation has to return the empty string, or if you're a purist, you'll say string.empty, which is the, is the built-in constant that is this. Anyway, I'm probably babbling on. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to implementing the built-in nullable. There's some other stuff we need to do. Looks like we got these operators we got to look at and equals and get hash code. Oh, that's oh, we got to do that as well. But before we I'm going to do that in a future video in the future videos. Before I go on to that, uh, one thing I want to mention is when we add two numbers if one of them's null, then the result will be null. Uh, something else to kind of keep in check. Let me get rid of all this for now. And get int question mark j gets five. Oh, let's do 55. Sure. If I console write line i equal to j, hopefully you would expect that to be false because j and i are not equal. Right? That's that's false. But if I bring this back and say, hey, they're both going to be five, you would expect that to be true, which is correct. Okay. If I set one to null, well, now are they equal? It doesn't make sense to me that they would be equal. So I would expect this operator to return false which it does right here. But then what if I do this? Null and null. Are i and j equal? In the land of C-sharp nullables, they are. Okay, we have true. But try doing this in SQL. I, I told you that we have the nullable types so we can kind of map to databases easier. And for whatever else you want to make a value type nullable for. But the logic in a database is if you have null on the left and null on the right, null is not equal to null. And why is that? Well, in databases, null means I don't know, and I've already said that. I don't know. What's your name? I don't know. What's his name? I don't know. Well, then, are your names equal? We don't know. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's just because my name, I don't know it because I've got amnesia, and your name... You don't know it because you have amnesia. That doesn't mean our names are equal. It just means we don't know if they're equal. Whereas in the C-sharp implementation, yeah, if you both don't know, then yeah, it's, that, we'll consider that equal. I, th I, th I thought that was kind of interesting. I encourage you to play with the other operators here. What's this going to return? What's this going to return? That sort of thing. But anyway, next video.